Hey everyone, Cody here. And today I want to answer the question, what type of paint should I use or should you use? I is the question that I normally see. So answering it as if I was asking the question, never mind. What type of paint should you use? Especially if you're just getting into painting, regardless of whether it's abstract or not, what kind of paint should you use? Well, there's a couple of well, quite a few different types of paint. Uh, there's acrylic, there's oil, there's watercolor, there's uh, gouache, I believe it's called. I, I apologize if I'm not saying that correctly. I've never used it. Uh, and then there's gloss enamel like I use. Uh, then there's even different kinds of paints within that, um, you know, just different grades and different uh, mediums and stuff like that. So I'm not going to get into each subtype of paint within the types of paint that there are. I'm just going to kind of talk about a few different ones and, you know, what you should use. Oh, there's also like a fluid, like fluid acrylics. So uh, ultimately, it's really hard to answer that question uh, because there's it depends on the type of painting you're going for. Let's uh, talk about kind of where you want to go with your painting and then that will kind of help answer that question. Right off the bat, I would say for most people, most people, I would say start off with acrylic. Acrylic is... It's cheap. Um, it's easy to kind of work with. Uh, you, it's a little bit pliable before it dries. It does dry kind of quickly compared to some other paints, but it's usually a little bit flexible. It's usually pretty affordable as far as there's a lot of uh, brands out there that you could get for like two or three dollars a tube. Now, I don't recommend staying with those brands if you ever intend to start selling those paintings, but if you're just learning or you want to practice uh, with something you've never used before, Probably acrylic. Acrylic is also very versatile uh, because you can use it to do a lot of different things. You can kind of water it down or add mediums to it, and you can do poured paintings. Um, you can just use it without dilution, and you can make you know landscapes. You can make um, you know portraits. You can make pretty much any type of painting that you want. Uh, you could use acrylic for uh, you know especially abstract. It's great for abstract because it's just easy to work with. Um, and uh, most artists, I would say, use uh, acrylic. So I would say if, you're, if you've never painted anything and you're looking to do like landscape or, or portraits or abstract art, the type of stuff that you might see on my channel or Siraj Fine Arts channel or uh, John Beckley's channel, these are some other major channels that are out there. Um, I believe Serena Fine Arts, I believe she uses acrylic too. I'm not 100% sure, but these are just some of the, the bigger channels that are on YouTube. I believe all of them use acrylic. Next would be oil. Um, oil, I would say, is it looks really nice and it's very easy to, you know, to blend colors, to apply layers. Um, it has a nice shine to it and overall it has a nice presentation. Um, it's not as easy to work with. It, it's not as forgiving. Um, so oil is a little more challenging to work with in the fact that once you kind of put it on, it it's kind of there for good. Um, doesn't mean you can't use it. Doesn't mean it can't be a good material. There's a lot of phenomenal artists that use uh, oil paints. Um, but it is kind of a more permanent thing. It's also a little more difficult to work with in the fact that you have to use thinners to thin it out if you want to put it on anything that requires that. So you can't just add a little bit of water uh, and thin it down. You have to use thinners. Um, it's also very messy. So if you're trying to get it on, if you get it on something and it dries, a lot of times you have to use a thinner to get it off. So again, it's, it's just very messy to work with. Um, but again, if you're a professional artist, the oil paint might actually give you a better look that you're going for. So it just, it looks a little bit nicer on the canvas. Uh, sometimes it's a little more vibrant and just has kind of a, a better color quality. Although from what I've heard, uh, acrylic actually holds up better, like in the long run. Um, it doesn't crack as much as the oil paint does. So again, totally your call. Uh, you can use it to you to do pretty much any of the same types of paintings. Uh, you can use it for you know abstract art, for landscapes, for portraits, whatever. I will say I I have never tried it for poured paintings. Um, actually, I I have done a uh, painting with oil paint, but I didn't dilute it at all. I just just used it as is. So I don't know, you know, how much thinner you would have to use to to do 
you know, that kind of paint, uh, that type of painting, but I assume you could. You could do uh, poured paintings with oil paint. You just have to dilute it with like uh, mineral spirits or thinner uh, or something like that. So uh, that's, that's that. Next would be like watercolor. And I don't know much about watercolor or even gouache. I think gouache is kind of similar in that area. It's like a, maybe I think it's a little thicker than watercolor, but not as thick as like acrylic. Um, again, I haven't really used any of those. I suppose if you were just going for very light uh, paintings, um, you know, paintings that were usually on paper uh, that kind of fill up the paper and are just very colorful, but you can't really do a whole lot with them other than kind of just putting them on the, the surface, you know, the canvas or the paper. Then that is gouache. Now they, they come, if you are good with those paints, they look awesome because the paintings are really like light and airy and, you know, they have a really nice vibrancy to them. However, you can't really do much more than kind of putting it on the canvas, at least as far as I know. Again, not a master of those paints, um, but just from what I've seen, pretty much all of the videos I've ever seen, it was just like, they were just, just, just putting little, uh, you know, dots of color on the, on the paper or canvas or whatever. So that's, uh, that would be watercolor. So if you're looking for simple paintings um, that are really colorful, that look nice, but you can't really you know put layers to or don't have a lot of versatility uh that's a very simple method of painting not simple in the process of making the paintings i'm not saying that those paintings are necessarily easy to make only saying that they are simple in the fact that they're limited in what you can make with them okay uh lastly um let's talk about oh not lastly but next let's talk about uh fluid acrylics so fluid acrylics are different than the you know soft or, or hard body acrylics and there's even two types of acrylic you know there's soft body and hard body and that's exactly what it sounds like there's a softer acrylic and then a harder acrylic but let's talk about the fluid acrylic because i brought that up first so fluid acrylics are exactly what they sound like it's it's a tube that you get that you just pour and they it's, it's acrylic paint that's already uh diluted so you don't have to dilute it anymore you can literally just start using it to do poured paintings um the problem that I find with fluid acrylics is they're kind of expensive. Um, so unless you're doing like small pieces or you're using a decent amount and charging a decent amount for that piece, um, they're kind of expensive. But the caveat is that you don't have to dilute that acrylic paint already. Like I have done a pretty interesting painting. Uh, it's a nice one. And it was just uh, like turquoise, black, white, and gold. And it was all fluid acrylics. And all I did was just kind of keep pouring them uh, down the canvas. So if this was the canvas, uh, let's say this was the canvas, right? I just kept pouring them um, down the side of it and then they just kept dripping down and it actually looked pretty cool. Um, so fluid acrylics are very easy to use. Again, kind of like watercolor, because it's already wet and there's no body to it, there's not a whole lot you can do with it. It's, it's just very, very straightforward. You, you're doing wet paintings, okay? That's, I mean, that's about it. Mentioning the soft and hard body acrylics, again, the, the only difference is that one is a little thicker than the other. What you would use them for is, if most of the acrylic that you're going to buy is going to be like a softer body, okay? So it's just going to be like kind of ruddy, but has a little bit of body to it. Um, that's most of the paints that you buy that are just acrylic. So that, you know, you can use them to kind of, you can thin them out and make them thinner and, and kind of flatter, or you can, you know, apply a decent amount and give it a little bit of texture. Well, the hard body acrylics are for texture. They're literally for applying thick paints. So this is for more of a texture. Um, most of the other paints you buy won't be like that. And that's pretty much that. Lastly, uh, is gloss enamel. So gloss enamel is what I've used uh, for a lot of the paintings I've done. Gloss enamel is essentially the type of paint that Jackson Pollock used when he did his paintings. And that's kind of how I got the idea. Um, I follow Jackson Pollock uh, and that's kind of how I got started painting. So I started, you know, using uh, the, the gloss enamel once I kind of learned about it. Essentially what gloss enamel is, is it's a high gloss house paint. And I don't recommend anybody use it, um, at least not without knowing what you're doing. The gloss enamel is great for Pollock style paintings, 
um, for doing kind of these like the dabbed paintings that I've done. You can even use it for poured paintings as well. Uh, the line paintings I've talked about, it does have a lot of uses where you're using gravity to make the painting. And the reason I say this, because obviously it's a very liquidy paint and it's much thicker than fluid acrylics or watercolor or any of that stuff. It's kind of in its own little realm. It's thicker than all that, but it's not as thick as regular acrylic or oil. So the thing with gloss enamel is you have to kind of know what you're doing. One, it's gonna get everywhere. Like it, it gets on anything and it ruins it. Uh, two, it's, it's not necessarily difficult to work with in the fact that, you know, it's just paint. You're just putting paint on it. However, you can't do a lot of the types of paintings that you could with acrylic because it's so wet. Uh, it has like no body to it. Um, and it just wants to move around because it's very, you know, it's a liquid. Uh, so gloss enamel, again, I recommend it if you're doing, you know, the Pollock style paintings. Uh, if you want to do like the fractal paintings that I've done. I've had a lot of difficulty trying to do fractal paintings with acrylic because acrylic is so thick. It doesn't want to move around the canvas. So you can, you can get that effect with gloss enamel. Um, you could always try it with uh, acrylic and maybe water it down a little bit or just keep doing it. I, I couldn't answer that for you. So for paintings that, you know, you can put on the ground or are created with gravity, like putting it up somewhere and then dripping paint on it, it's great for those. It gives you great color and the gloss looks pretty cool once it dries and you don't have to varnish it because it's already protected. However, it gets everywhere and destroys anything it touches. So just make sure that you're doing it in an area where you don't care how that looks. If you're doing it outside on some rocks or you're doing it over canvas or plastic or something, so you're not going to get it all over everything and wear clothes that you don't care about because it will destroy them. But that's it. Those are the main types of paint uh, to use if you're getting into painting, if you're just kind of learning and you've seen other of the major channels out there um, on, you know, how to create some abstract art. That's what I would say. I would say start with acrylic because acrylic the kind of acrylic you could buy at the store, again, it's readily available. It's usually pretty decent, like cheap for the price. Um, you can achieve a lot of effects with it. And, you know, it's just a good tool. It's just a good medium. This is, it's, it's the reason why most artists, at least most of the professional artists that I've seen, they use acrylic. It's just so versatile. So that's what I would suggest. Um, and I really don't have anything else to say. If you have any other questions about it, Leave them in the comment section. I will try to answer them if I can. And uh, if not, then have an awesome rest of your day, regardless of what anyone says. Um, but that's it. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. God bless and see you then.